I am going to talk about Star Trek uh, Strange New Worlds a little bit, but I do want to start by saying it is sickening and pathetic to see how people ganged up on and attacked Beltran, Robert Beltran, all week uh, on Twitter. I, I even thought maybe he did do something wrong, but I'm not really sure exactly what he did wrong because he went to a, a Star Trek convention and everybody was angry at him for it, but everybody, all the other Star Trek people were at the convention, but only he was singled out. So I was like, well, did he say something that went against the rules or something that other people didn't say? Um, so it's weird that they held him to a weird standard, and I couldn't figure out why people were crapping on Robert Beltran, but then I found out that he's a bit conservative, and that explains it. Um, and it's weird because Star Trek has always been about involving everybody. When... Um, when LGBTQ type of people were the minority, we embraced all the differences as best we could and tried to bring them into the mix. When uh, Star Trek first launched and, you know, there wasn't a lot of African-American and Asian uh, representation and other cultures and countries representation on the show, on shows on TV, they brought that into the mix because very progressive. Um, and and what is the, mo the one of the biggest minorities in Hollywood politically is a conservative somebody who is more independent or right-leaning um and so robert beltran if he's a conservative is basically just being attacked for being a conservative which is weird because you should embrace his difference because that's what you're supposed to do because in the future in star trek there's not going to be all these political parties and things it's like we're all working together and, and coming together, and even if we have differences, we figure out a way to, you know, put our brains together and come to an equal thought uh, or a compromise thought or the best case scenario or best decision. We don't sort of bash people over the head with a hammer and tell them we're going to go this way or you're a bigot or crazy person. Um, but, yeah, it seems like that's what they, they've done to Robert Beltran. And, um, you know, that's unfortunately where Star Trek is now. The fans are just nasty. The fans attack people and hate on people, and yet they say they're the good progressive whatever and rainbow people, but, like, they're actually evil demons. <laughs> like, it's very bizarre. Funny enough, I'm wearing my Diablo uh, Demon Hunter T-shirt. So I've noticed that uh, throughout the years, uh, that the bullies have changed. You know, it's weird. It used to be that the bullies were more of the patriotic, conservative, right-wing people, religious people, and the football jocks. But now it's become the nerds. It's very strange. The nerds, or the so-called nerds, um, or the nerds have been hijacked. I think there's still regular nerds like all of us. But I think there's these, these new group of fringe people that are sort of claiming to be these nerd types. But they, they can't be because they're so emotional and crazy um, it's not it's not nerd like because nerds think with their brains and these pe people think with their insanity and their emotions, which explains why Spock in Strange New Worlds is just an emotional cr crackhead like Spock is always sorry and weeping and crying. Everybody's crying on this show. Um, you know, o old Spock was not like this at all. And But this Spock did grow up with Michael Burnham, who cries every two seconds. So maybe the fact that they created a sister for Spock, even though he never had one, now he does. <laughs> and she's emotional and crazy in Star Trek Discovery, which is one of the reasons why we hated that show so much. Um, but now Spock is emotional and crazy. And I hate it. And I hate Spock. And so I hate... Strange New Worlds, the first season of Strange New Worlds, I gave it a 6 out of 10, which is watchable for me. For me, a 6 out of 10, I can watch it again. I can maybe buy it on Blu-ray, maybe. Um, I found four of the 10 episodes to be episodes I liked for the most part, although they were a little bit off, and some of these complaints I have are still there. But, man, I'll tell you, by season two of Strange New Worlds, Jesus this show, to me, has taken a absolute nosedive. Like, I don't. I am shocked. So many people like it, but I mean, it's not like Picard, where like almost everybody was on board with Picard season three. 
You know what I mean? There's a split for Picard season one and two. For Picard season one and two, it's like there are some people that liked it, but m- I-, I felt most people did not like Picard season one and two. Most people didn't like it. I think the only people that like Picard season one and two are are Discovery fans and other Star Trek fans who just seemingly like everything. So it's it's funny because there's these different sections of the Star Trek fan base and I feel like if you divide them up, there's like four sections. I don't know how to explain this. And this isn't bad or good. If, if you're a fan of any of these or not a fan or whatever you are, that's fine. You guys be whatever you want. I, I, but I am... I do find this interesting. The fan base is kind of like broken up into these four sections. I think it's four. Let's do this experiment now. I'm just, and I know this is not equal to scale because I just made this up. So the corners aren't exactly equal, but so don't worry about that. It's not, they're supposed to be all equal. But it's like, you got like, I don't know, like, like, you got start fans that like like everything, right? Like you got the fan, you got some Star Trek fans. They like everything, so no matter what Star Trek you put in front of them, they're gonna like everything, right? They're the fans that like everything. Then there's the OGs, which I would call like the TOS fans, the TOS fans, right? And then there's like the 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 then there's, I don't know, what do you call my era? The 80s fans? The people that grew up with the movies, right? I don't know, 80s fans, is that what you call this? Um, or maybe maybe we shouldn't divide it up by year. We should divide it up by personality. So then you got the, the I would say, like more the Berman era fans. And, and I don't mean that you love everything Berman did. I just mean that, like, typically you like all the, like, you you like the TNG, the Voyager, the Deep Space Nine, and you like a little bit of TOS, and you really like the original movies. Um, I don't know, like the OGs TOS people, and you like everything people, the Berman era fans, and then there's like the new fans. I call them the new fans. And so they're interesting because if you look at these groups, like... Let's like, I'll just put a green circle over if they liked it, right? So typical, and this isn't definitive for everybody, but typically, when if you say, well, Star Trek, Star Trek Picard season one, Star Trek Picard season one, right? Uh, the new fans for the most part liked it. Um, and the Berman era fans didn't really like it. But the OGs of TOS didn't really like it. But the people who like everything kind of liked it, mostly, right? Like, most of these people liked it. You know, I would say, like, 70% of each of these groups liked Picard Seasons 1 and 2, right? And maybe Season 2 it was hard. I think some people didn't like Season 2 more. But either way, that's about half, maybe, right? But if you look at Picard Season 3, the OG TOS people... Some of them, most of them kind of liked it. The new fans liked it. The Berman era fans, for the most part, liked it. And people that like everything obviously liked it. So you had a, f- a four out of four, right? So Picard season three is a massive hit because you had a four out of four, right? So what I found when I watched um, Star Trek Strange New Worlds season one, I found the people that like everything certainly liked it. The, the new fans of the Discovery type of fans, they liked it. And then what I found was the 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 Berman era fans were like split. Like, it was like, it's weird. It's like they're split. So I give it a green, a green, like, like, I don't know, like, and a, and a, and a half. It was, it was like split, right? And then I would say that, like, the OG TOS people, I felt most of them didn't like it. But, like, just barely. It feels like they almost really liked it. So I would not select that. So it's really close, right? And I felt like Season 2 of Strange New Worlds, the people that like everything liked it. 
the new fans liked it. And the Berman era fans, like, it's like they half like it again. So, or or something. Like, I don't know, it's very weird. It's like halfway. Right? And some of the OGs kind of like it too. So it's like, I, I, I kind of messed up here. I meant to do this with the last season and this season. But my point is the Berman era fans, the circle got smaller. Do you know what I mean? It got smaller. So if last season... Like, people liked it, like, about, like, almost like that. It shrunk a little bit. But you know what I mean? Like, it's a close win. But, like, if you look at Discovery, right, Star Trek Discovery, people like everything like it. The new fans obviously like it because that's how they were created, mostly. Or or they're, like, the movie fans of 2007, J.J. Abrams. Uh, But the Berman fans didn't really like it for the most part. Some, Some Berman fans do like it, but, like, there's a lot of people that don't. Um... And then the OGs of TOS didn't really like it either. So it's like it didn't really do well with half of the audience. But you can see why I believe Picard Season 3 is the most popular new Star Trek there has been. Um, and it's like Lower Decks. Lower Decks, the people like everything, seem to like it. New, new fans are like half like it. So not all new fans like it. So it's like half. Berman era fans, half. And then OG TOS people, like, probably no. It's close, but probably no. So it's like if you add these two together, that's a half, and that's one. So it's half right there. So they are less than half. So it doesn't do so well, but it's okay. You know, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, n- we're never always on the same page. But I felt like with Star Trek Picard, I felt like we were. Like, everything liked it. New fans kind of liked it. The OGs, you know, they liked it. And Berman era fans definitely liked it for the most part. So you had this was the first time I saw a four for four. That was ridiculous to go off of, but that's just the way I see things. Anyway, I'm gonna do another video on Star Trek: Strange New World season two. Um, I'll talk about everything that's wrong with it. Why even talk about it anymore at this point? If if you don't like it, you're like a bigot or a crazy person or an old. People just put people down like crazy. It's really weird. The bottom line is the writing, it, it sounds like Strange New Worlds feels like it was written by teenage morons. Um, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. We have to deal with T'Pring before we ever should see T'Pring. She's there. That doesn't make sense. The the Gorn being here early, that doesn't make sense. Um, Pike barely gets any time on the show and has any captain moments. He's just an idiot who cooks. Spock is a moron who says sorry every episode and is crying over all the women everywhere, and he's just a bitch. Um, all the women are super powerful. Um, you know, it's just so weird, dude. Like, I love Captain Janeway. She's a female. She's a captain. I love Captain Janeway's interactions with other men because she's a captain and she is what she says goes, but she listens to people, but she is a captain and she does captain things and people listen to her. But in Star Trek Strange New Worlds, the men, like, they're not really power. They act like, this is my order, but I don't know. Uh, What about, what do you think, women? Because we're not really that smart. We're dumb guys. You know, like, Captain Janeway would never be like, Hey guys, just want to know because I'm not really that smart. That's not what that happened. Captain Janeway was Captain Janeway. Captain Picard was Captain Picard. Captain Kirk was Captain Kirk. Yes, they got along with their bridge crew and they went. They had meetings to go over things and they listened to everybody. But my God, on this show, I, you can watch it for yourself. The men are like morons, and every second somebody somebody who's a a uh, female has a better idea. Or, you're dumb, you don't understand, Spock. Silly Spock, you dummy Spock. Dude, I'm just like, I'm not the one who's seeing this and making this up. It's in the show. I don't, I've never ever thought of this type of stuff before until I've seen the, these shows. Discovery and Strange New Worlds. And it's not about women and men because I don't mind if, if half, I don't mind if 90% of the bridge crew were females. I don't care as long as people act like they're supposed to in Star Trek, but they're not acting like they're supposed to in Star Trek. The, the men have to be stupid or dumb or scared or something for somebody else to have a better idea. It's very strange. It's very bizarre. Um, the show is weird. It's, it's, I don't know, dude. It's just so bizarre. I don't understand what is going on in the world 
right now, but this is why all like so many things are failing, so many things are terrible. It's like the Barbie movie. I I like the Barbie movie. Like if you're a little if you're a girl growing up with Barbie, the Barbie movie should be like a crazy movie about girls are awesome and and Ken dolls are stupid and guys are whatever. We love the Barbie. Makes sense because it's Barbie. If there you know, if there's like a He-Man movie, I expect He-Man to be the shit and men and muscles and we have swords. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I get those things. I like Barbie. I don't have a problem with it. Like Oppenheimer, too. Completely different movies. But I love that people were interested in going to see them. It's not about that. I have no bias, really. But uh, the show does. And it's evident. Dead evident. I wish I could like it. I told you, this, the singing episode is like one of the least problems. You know, the singing episode, because at least the songs were, were pretty awesome. I thought the songs were good. I thought the songs were awesome, good, but the show is just too damn emotional. Every episode, every scene, every character, emotions and trauma and emotions and trauma. That is not Star Trek. But it's it's Star Trek now, and uh, I ain't buying it. But if it was good, I would have bought it on Blu-ray. Just like I'm going to buy Picard Season 3 on Blu-ray because it's friggin' awesome. And Terry Metalis should be in charge of Star Trek. Leave some comments down below, guys. This is Star Trek Late Night, and um, I don't know, man. I, I, I got to come back. I was going to end the show, but real quickly. Picard Season 3 made me so happy and awesome. It was like Star Trek is kind of back. It felt great. Um, you know, life has kind of been weird recently for me, and uh, Picard Season 3 took my mind off a lot of things, made me happy for Star Trek. But now, I mean, I'm pr- I am I won't watch, I don't think I will really watch Star Trek Strange New Worlds ever again. Um, and it makes me sad. The show makes me sad and angry and upset and frustrated that, like, like, I'm watching the thing I love be controlled by morons. And I, I used to hear older fans say this kind of thing a little bit about Star Trek The Next Generation. But then Star Trek The Next Generation got better, and it got really good, and then everybody became came on board, and then suddenly most people kind of liked it, and they eventually really accepted it. And the same thing happened a little bit with, um, you know, Voyager and Deep Space Nine. And even the same thing happened a little a little bit with Enterprise. But like that the difference for me is I was once in this position with Enterprise because with Enterprise I didn't like it at first, but then I really did like it. And then I loved it and I knew that so many people didn't like it and that made me kind of sad because I thought the show was great. But but um now more people have come around to Enterprise, but I am finally on the other side of the fence. This is the first time in my entire life, 39 years on the planet, since watching Star Trek since 1986, 1987, when I started watching Star Trek. Um, This is my first time ever the last uh, few years feeling, like, disgusted and, and freaked out over what has become of Star Trek. I've never... It's, it's, it's like watching your favorite thing be, like, like abducted or something. It's very strange. But in the end, um, what are you going to do? And uh, this, a lot of people do like it though. So I would say like 70, it seems like at least 75% of the fans like it, right? So even though Discovery, only about 30 or 40% of the fans like Discovery, I would say 75% of the fans like Strange New Worlds. I would rather... Picard season three Terry Metalis take over and do legacy because it seems like 85 to 90 percent of the fan base likes that but strange new worlds is about popular with about 70 to 75 percent of the fans it feels like which is way more than I expected I would think it would be popular with maybe 40 percent of the fans at this point maybe 50 but um yeah I just can't I, I I don't know I don't get it I looked through all these examples and I gave all these but there's so many things screwed up in the timeline that I'm reading it like makes your head want to explode but on top of that forget canon forget all these other things and whatever else the real problem is the writing it is written by teenage like activists and that's what Hollywood is now anyway 
So I got to go. That's my opinion. Trust me, you don't want to hear any more because you're going to think I'm – I'll just be called names just like all the conservative Star Trek people, you know? Robert Beltran, death threats. He's on the same stage as all the other Star Trek people. Why does he get death threats? Oh, because he's conservative. Why would you give death threats to somebody? I'll, but that's it. I'm out. Bye.